He's not a man. He's a machine. They call him Cage. Yeah, they do. So welcome to South Florida. Hey, thank you, man. It's been a while since I've been back here. Uh, it's nice. I love Florida. And you got, uh, you know, you got a great show here tonight with Ronan. So we're happy to have you here. Yeah, you know, I've actually been talking to uh, Trevor, the guy that runs Ronan for a while, trying to work out a date to come out here. Finally, it happens that I got a sweet match, you know, yeah. with Lince and Mr. 450, Jason, uh, Justin Cade. I mean, it's people I haven't worked with, so I'm stoked. I want to know how much of your day is devoted to making these sideburns look as per look as perfect as they are. It's funny you ask that because my friend came over to the hotel today, right? And I was like, it was in the middle of shaving. I was like, oh, let me, let me beat them before they come to the door. And I literally did it probably in 90 seconds. Just what? Da, 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 bah. I've done it so long. It's, you know, it's like putting peanut butter on a piece of toast, man. It's no problem. I find that very impressive. I, I love peanut butter, so it's, yeah, it's very impressive. <laughs> I feel like I'm like a normal sized human, but like standing next to you, I feel very, very small. Hey, you, you look pretty fit too. No I, mean, I, you over. I work out. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, standing here right now, how much do you weigh? Uh, 250. Oh my God. <laughs> Which is incredible. Uh, what I what I think is very impressive is you, I, got, I got abs too. So I mean, I'm not like a bloated 250. Look at this! Wow. Uh, I'm not ashamed of 250. No, 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 no. <laughs> just, just kidding, just kidding. Whoa. I got no beef with shame. It's for cool. I like that you talk about the fact that you were in high school at like 150. Yeah. I mean, and look at you now. So what was the transition to you know look the way that you look that you look now? I mean, it was a. Uh, over a decade of, of time, I mean, it wasn't like I just like, oh, let me lift some weights. Oh, I'm a monster. Like, like your machine, you mean? It, it, well, you know, first I became a monster, then I went past that. Okay, but that's the you transition. Know, like, like I gained like 70 pounds over a couple of years, but it wasn't uh, it wasn't quality weight. You know, I look good in a shirt, but when the shirt came off, it was like, ah, maybe it's time to cut. You know, and then went back and forth, back and forth, year after year. Every time I thought I knew what I was doing, I'd be like, holy crap, look at this, or look at this diet, or this is what I should be doing the whole time, and then. Uh, you know, it's just gradually uh, progressed after uh, year after year and got to the point. I mean, that's that's how I've looked at it with wrestling, like not just trying to progress, you know, outside of the ring or, or my physical presence or, or in the ring or yeah. on the mic or character and persona. Like, it's all around, man. That's why I try to say try to be the all-around best because that's what it should be. And if you're not uh, trying to progress in some way, shape, or form, you know, day after day, then you're just kind of sitting around maintaining and just, you know, uh, spinning your wheels. Can we compare here? To just to show the difference. The piece over here. Yeah, okay. <laughs> just to, oh, oh my god. Yeah, well there you go. Yep, that's that's pretty much how it works. I saw you work in Lucha uh, underground. I went to the temple. I was there in LA. What an atmosphere there. It's the best. It's the best. You know, I don't know if you know Pro Wrestling Gorilla PWG over in uh Reseda, California's uh many say including myself is like the the best place to work as far as the fan interaction just the, the appreciation for it as Tommaso Ciampa would say it's the Disneyland of professional wrestling but but it was coming up closely but I think at least from my point of view that the temple and the, the believers there have over overtaken my favorite crowd to work for and making PWG number two underneath them I mean what I think is so cool about it is it's it's a TV show about wrestling uh, it's my exact verbiage it's a TV show about wrestling, not a wrestling show on TV. It's right. totally what it is. So with that said, because it is a TV show, did you have to audition to be part of it? Come on. <laughs> Come on. Serious no. question, though. No, 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 no. I mean, I actually, long story here, but we'll make it short. I actually did a tryout for AAA like, after I left WWE, and they were super stoked on me. And Conan hit me up. He was like, hey, we want to bring you in, but, you know, uh, business is kind of down right now, but hang tight. We're going to do something in America, and we're definitely going to use you for that. Then we'll fast forward like four years later, and Lucha Underground finally comes to fruition. Right. So um, that's kind of how that came about. I knew it was going to happen about six months before we started taping the first uh, season. But when you heard it was Lucha, were you like, I'm not really a, a luchador? Well, well, I knew it was American-based, though, still. So I knew I was I knew I was going to put a mask on and be a luchador. I knew it was going to yeah. be myself. Um, and I was, uh, and actually, even then, I was still uncertain because there was a lot of TV guys involved with it. Like we just said, it's a TV show. And so a lot of uh, the workers were like, uh, how is this going to be? Is it going to work out? Like yeah. a lot of uncertainty. And, and my deal, I actually worked out a deal with AAA and Lucha Underground. So that was a sweeter deal. And plus I knew AAA wasn't going anywhere and I could finally go down there in Mexico. And then my first day, uh, uh, you know, on set for Lucha Underground, I couldn't have been more wrong about my, my, my misconception of how it was going to be. It's been the best place undoubtedly the best treatment the most fun and it finally feels like i always thought it would feel yeah. to be uh to be a pro wrestler now so it's interesting that you say oh, i got to be me because you look at guys like matt cross or a ricochet that get to be themselves but they got to wear a mask mm -hmm. yeah it, i mean 
it's usually the I mean, there's some guys that like like I don't really think there's a big difference between you know say for instance Ricochet and Puma I mean the, the outfit the master but like yeah. it's not like they're they're a different person sure. you know then you have someone who's blowing up right now Jeffrey Cobb Jeff Cobb uh, who plays Matanza and they're both awesome because he's an awesome competitor awesome athlete but uh, obviously Matanza is a complete 180 from Jeff Cobb and you wouldn't even know like that they're really the same whereas like you know Matt Cross and Ricochet you're gonna you know that son of Havoc and Puma because of their right. you know tattoos beard their style the way they move their, their, their personality is exactly the same um, and they they wanted to keep me the same and then they wanted to, the network wanted to change my name and we were coming with different name ideas I'm like yeah you know what I just told Joseph straight up like dude these suck I don't know I want to just be Cage and, and you like, think you can just you can just say that sucks sorry I'm, just, honest, like, I'm, like, I'm like I hate it man let's just be Cage because I don't want you to be Cage too he goes how about that what if I talked to him when we just dropped the Brian and just keep Cage and yeah. I'm like well I still own the intellectual property even so he goes yeah. yeah but I think they might bite on it a little better because there's a little separation yeah. even though still knows me as Brian Cage and I'm like I'm still just myself and so boom I got I didn't have to change my character didn't have to change my name just seemed to be Cage and uh, what people's ass so <laughs> that's exactly what you do <laughs> Th that atmosphere in there is incredible although I did find it weird that you guys don't come out to entrance music this is a little like behind the scenes here you come out the crowd goes crazy but there's no entrance music playing when you come out. Is that hard for you to kind of get into the mood? It, you know, it is a little bit. In the first few times, I was like, ah, because that's like the switch for me. You know, I'm 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 just normal Brian until the music hits. I'm like, oh, now I'm you know. Now you're the machine. Now I got the Rage of Cage going through me. Yeah. <laughs> but so there's no music. There's no switch. It's like you never get that adrenaline kick, and sometimes it kind of takes a little bit. But luckily now it's so over and the crowd's so hyped. Yeah. It doesn't usually affect you so much because you walk out and it's just they're there. You know what I mean? All screaming in Spanish yeah. and I don't understand and what they're it's saying. Too bad too because I love I love my interest music. Well, actually, all the guys, including Ricochet stuff, feel like I have the best interest music. And I think that's what they have here tonight because I usually send it out because they sent me a file all right. for all the indie shows. So I have the Hava Machine and the music plays and people know it's me. So. I watched an old interview with you where you basically said WWE was your goal and that, you know, even if you could just work there for a couple of weeks, you would have accomplished your goal. So obviously you spent some time in FCW, you were signed to a WWE contract, but you didn't make it to the main roster. Does that mean, did you accomplish the goal or is it still out there? Well, ultimately, I, I told everyone who doubted me and stuff along the way in junior high and, and high school and stuff that I said, I will be signed by the time I'm 24. WWE, I'm like, I guarantee it, and that's exactly what I did. So, in that regards, that was like my ultimate goal, and I accomplished it. I can't really walk away feeling like a failure. Now I'm, you know, even more happy, or happier, and more content, and you know, more financially well off, and well known, and blah 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 blah. So yeah, I, I don't think I failed at anything. But yeah, I mean, everybody, everybody's dream is the main event WrestleMania, right? You know, be the champ. I mean, that's that's the show. Even if I don't want to be in WWE, everybody wants to be in WrestleMania because that, that's you know the be all end all. Um, but no, at the end of the day, I'm not upset, and I'm not, uh, I'm not. Is that still the goal? I wouldn't be opposed to going back to WWE, but if it never happens for me, I'm fine with that. So, like, obviously, yes, that'd be rad, but truth be told, at, at the very moment right now, this very second, more of my goal would be to go to New Japan than would be to work WrestleMania. Really? Just at the moment. Just Why? Uh, to me, being in WWE already, it was a little bit of a dream killer, and to, like, all the other people they signed... Like, uh, it almost, uh, it, it made it, like, not that impressive that I got signed because there's a lot of people that shouldn't be there, that don't deserve to be there. So I'm like, what does this really even mean? Whereas New Japan, unless you're fucking awesome, you know, you're not going to be there. So to me, as far as our craft, it's more of a feather in the cap and a, a you know, pat on your back that, hey, you're good. Yeah. Um, like, cause even Russell, fucking Snooki was at WrestleMania. So I mean, you know, I, <laughs> you still, is that going to be in freaking Tokyo Dome? You know what I mean? But, uh. Uh, I mean, yeah, obviously for the pop culture phenomenon, it's the WrestleMania is amazing. So I'd love the opportunity. But uh, as far as my, my bucket list of wrestling, that would be the, the, the first more immediate thing would be uh, New Japan. And then, hey, you know, hopefully yeah. down the road, I can get an AJ Styles deal and I'll, I'll work him at WrestleMania. <laughs> I'll be perfect. So was WWE the dream killer because it didn't work out the way you wanted it to? No, you know, because I enjoyed my time there. I wasn't like, I'm like, ah, they need this or that. And I, I kind of got screwed over as, as far as I got released and almost brought back and not and back and forth, back and forth. But, um, no, it just it just opens your eyes to a lot of the backstage stuff where it's not, as, um, it's not what you would just would think. I mean, a lot, a lot of the guys sure that maybe are the guy are getting a good push. Of course they're going to like it there because they're, you know, yeah. being the guy. But realistically, unless you're their guy, unless you're their guy that you want to push, you're not going to make it over. They say... You have to get yourself over the biggest load of crap. I mean, look at Zack Ryder. He got himself over the moon. He got social media going for him. He did all this. What did they do? Nothing. They like gave him a rub for the U.S. title for half a second, then gave it to John Cena. Like it just, 
I don't know. It's just frustrating. And like all my friends that are there, which well, most of them are gone now, whether they've been quit or released, um, just I almost feel like they're only there for the paycheck. And to have something you've wanted to do since you're five years old, your ultimate dream, you know, in life, become just a average nine to five. Okay, I guess I'll stay here because I'm getting paid. Like that yeah. sucks, man. So, yeah. uh, you know, uh, it, I, I think you know you build enough namesake. Like, like you know, if they were brought AJ Styles in eight years ago, he would not be in the position he is now. You yeah. know what I mean? So, you know, uh, something like that would obviously be be amazing. And of course, you're you're gonna like it more than. Uh, than not, but you know, dude, there's hope with NXT. NXT's awesome right now. Yeah, they're bringing cruiserweight of, classics, great. That's going on. They're bringing a lot of real wrestlers now. They're having a lot of real wrestling. I think too, yeah. it's because New Japan's doing so well, Ring of Honor's doing so well. You got Lucha Underground doing so well, and it's all that style. It's a know. great time to be a wrestler. Great time to be a wrestling fan too. For sure, for sure. You know, all the indies in uh, England and Europe are blowing up right now. I mean, it's 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 pretty hot. Did you at any point think maybe I can drop down to 205 and be in the cruiserweight classic? <laughs> <laughs> you know, maybe a, a few years back, maybe. Well, yeah. When was the last time you were 205? Uh, <laughs> actually, the beginning of 2013, the last time I did a, a, a bodybuilding show at the, in that weight class. Oh, well that's, so you were 205 for like uh, 12 hours. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. You know, th three and a half years ago for two hours, I was, I was 205. <laughs> so but outside of that, no. Again, I blew up to 240 right away. So <laughs> I know that you have a, a very impressive Scott Steiner impression. <laughs> Can I hear a little bit of this? You want a little Scott Steiner, huh? Uh, you want you want some? All right, here we go. This first thing popped in my head. You know, you get the papers together, and I'll be the modifier. And you gotta be Jeremy Borash. You mean mediator? You mean Shut mediator? Up. <laughs> What's the other one? The you know, take a look at me. You see that I'm a physical phenomena. His sweet clubs. <laughs> or how about this? Oh, here I don't know if I can memorize the whole thing. This might be long, but check it out. I'll loot you underground it. Okay. You see. At Ultima, Ultima Lucha Trace, I face in Willie Mack and Johnny Mundo in a three-way. And you look at me, you can see that I'm a machine, and you compare me to the Mac, and you can tell that, oh man, we're not all created equal. You see, because when Mac and I go one-on-one, -on -one, normally, a regular luchador would have a 50% chance. But since I'm a machine, and he's just a regular man, his 50% gets cut in half, and he's only got 25% chance of beating the machine. Then you throw in Johnny Mundo, who's not going to even try to beat me, because he knows that he can't. And Willie Mac's chances go from 25 to even more drastically low. You see, because I take John Morrison's one-third and third percent chance, and add it to my 75% chance, that gives me 125% chance to Willie Mac. You see, the numbers don't lie. These are a disaster for you, Willie Mac. It's the ultimate lucha trace. Prepare to buy a bow down to the man with the largest arms in the world. He's not a man, he's a machine. You're amazing. Thanks so much, Cage. <laughs>